In this video, I'm going to go over how I created this Cobra Arctic base. I think it's a fun thing to try, and the results can be pretty great. I hope this video shows how the process isn't that hard, but it can be very rewarding. At the time of making this video, there's been a lot of snow, and I've been putting my Joes outside, but they kind of need a base. But I also don't have the money to buy a pterodrome. They're really expensive now. So I got the idea that maybe I should make one myself. When I was a kid, my grandfather built me this amazing castle out of pieces of scrap wood and metal he had around his shop. It even had a working drawbridge and was hand painted. I still have it, and it was all the inspiration I needed to get started on what I'd call the Cobra Arctic Base, or the poor man's pterodrome. To start off the project, I needed some basic forms to build off of. I knew that starting with a container was a great place to start. The container's shape would give a mass to the structure, as well as strength so it wouldn't be really fragile. I settled on these large protein powder containers. They have a nice rounded form that was in line with a sort of arctic base prefab style futuristic kind of building. To detail out the container, all I needed were some basic tools, glue, styrene, and a random model kit for parts. I'll have links below in the description to some of the items I used on this project. Getting started on the building, you want to make sure everything is in scale. Since we're making a G.I. Joe base, we're working at 1 18th scale for 3 and 3 quarter to 4 inch figures. I'm using a Joy Toy 1 18th scale soldier as a stand-in during the build. The first thing I'm working out is the railing for the rooftop observation post. This entails building a railing or low wall around the container's lid, so it's critical to always be putting the figure next to the wall to make sure it's a good height. You don't want to spend a lot of time on something and then add your figures in only to find out all your hard work is out of scale. It sounds basic, but it's really easy to get thrown off, especially when you're focusing on just one part of the building. So here I'm cutting some styrene tubes. I'm using those as kind of structural pieces to hold up the smaller, kind of thinner styrene that's going to make up the wall. I'm doing this little trick I learned like years ago, and it's that you use your finger as a guide and make sure that the distance between your pen and your finger stay the same. And then as you slide your finger along an object, like this styrene tube, you can draw perfectly straight lines. It's kind of a cool trick, and I thought I'd just want to like show it in the video so you guys could try it. But it's a lot easier than trying to get a straight edge alongside a tube, especially a tube, like a curved object. It's really hard to get your straight edge to you know, not move around unless you use tape or something. And this is just a cool little trick to do that. So what I'm also using is that little miter saw. It seems like kind of silly, like this tiny little tool, but the saw has like really tight little teeth and the miter saw lets you make really nice 90 degree um, cuts. So when you line things up, like with this lid here where I'm gluing it on, you'll get a nice 90 degree straight up and down um, you know, angle to your stuff. And that'll just make look, everything look a little more you know, professional and tight and realistic. Here I'm check fitting the pieces I cut. This is to make sure everything will work when I glue it in. This is super important. I'm also using hot glue for this because it's really strong and sets quickly. It can also fill gaps well and be pulled apart if you make a mistake. But be warned it's a little messy, but it can also be cleaned up afterwards by cutting away the excess. And again, these are just tubes of styrene or plastic that I'm cutting with an X-Acto knife, but any kind of blade will work. And here I'm just pushing the pieces into place. I've got some glue applied, but I'm gonna add some more just to make sure it holds. And you can see the styrene, you know, bends really easily because I think this is like one mil thick or half a mil thick, so it's really easy to work with. Here we can see the upper area mostly finished off, but note how badly my walls look. It's not keeping a good radius all around and looks kind of pinched. At this point, I'm telling myself, it's okay. But later on, I use a trick to make it look more uniform and also give thickness to the railing wall. At this point, I'd like to discuss overall composition and the proportions of the thing you're making. I've overlaid this great tutorial from the Etheridge Brothers Art Tutorials. It's discussing the idea of using three shapes of varied size to create an interesting character. But in our case, we can use the same rule for our building. With this Cobra base, I want the main area below to be the major form, with the lookout area above being a secondary mass that is smaller. Our third mass will be the door, this is a good rule of thumb to think about before you jump into a project. I probably should have sketched my design out, but it was a Saturday and I was inspired and so I just jumped into this. But if this is your first time doing this, or you're going to be spending more time on a build, planning this kind of thing out is well worth it. And you'll see later how we always want to make sure that we see those three major forms first before we focus on any of the other details. 
Now I'm working on the door. For that we want a frame and the door itself. I made this by simply cutting a rectangle of flat styrene and then gluing two I-beam shaped styrene pieces on either side. Styrene is really fun because it comes in tubes, I-beam shapes, L shapes, and all kinds of other extruded forms. The idea of scratch building stuff can seem intimidating at first, but it's just plastic and glue. I'd recommend just starting to cut up some pieces and glue them together and get familiar with the medium. And if something goes badly, you can just toss it and start over. Now comes the detailing. I'm clipping pieces off of a model kit sprue and then adding them to the exterior. This is great for filling in gaps and adding detail and scale to the building. I'm using a Japanese kit from the Frame Arms series. These are really nicely detailed Japanese mechs and the set has tons of great little bits. Don't worry too much about the specific set you use, just make sure to get a look at the sprues and make sure they have lots of nice little detailed parts and no really large single pieces. If you've ever seen a making of Star Wars video, you might be familiar with this technique called greebling. The model makers use this on all the Star Wars models, raiding tank and airplane kits to get the little details they needed to add to their miniatures. Adam Savage has talked several times on his tested YouTube channel about his time at ILM and some of the favorite kits they'd mine for greebles. Here I'm working on a hatch for the upper level. I'm going to use a model piece for the hinge detail and then a flat styrene piece to represent the hatch itself. Even though the piece isn't really a hinge, it has some of the characteristics of a hinge and its placement off to the side helps sell it and its function. I also clip the corners of the sheet to make it seem more like a shaped hatch rather than just a simple rectangle. It's really important to remember not to space your bits evenly. Clump your areas of detail, leaving other areas flat and barren of the detailing. And even within your areas of detail, try to avoid symmetry and even repeating spacing. Another Etheridge tutorial breaks this down well and suggests a ratio of one part complex to two parts simple. I didn't do it, but you might want to just take some tape and try covering the areas where you want detail to be, and then step back and see how that feels. Did you cover too much? Not enough. And also try to think of the function of these detailed bits. Why is the detail there? And why is it exposed? And why is it not covered with a panel? So what I'm thinking here is that the part over the door is some kind of sensor, lighting kind of array, something that deals with the function of people entering the base, and you need a little bit of detail over the door. The bits I'm adding there are just something to break up that curve. The, um, the shape I'm working with, it just has that smooth, consistent curve all the way around. And I thought that adding some details at certain points around the curve to break it up would just help make the form seem a little more interesting. These just look like little kind of, I don't know, maybe like armor bits for the mech's knees or joints or something. But just by gluing them down, you know, even though they don't fit the curve, they do work in those spots as maybe, you know, maybe little housings for lights, um, maybe some kind of, you know, access panels to get to the, um, you know, the attach points when they actually assemble these on site. And, you know, they just give some way of, like I was saying, breaking up that ring, which feels a little too smooth and a little too consistent for what we want. You can also see I put a little panel next to the door, thinking maybe that's some kind of keypad, some kind of access code, you know, thing that, that you know, when the Cobra soldiers want to get in, they have to go through. And then you can see me there holding up that soldier, just making sure that everything kind of feels in scale, that it makes sense, like how it's working. You can also see I glued some I-beams around the, the, um, the outside of the structure. This felt, again, like that, that sort of curve above that, you know, it was too flat and it needed to be broken up into panels. Instead of trying to score the plastic, I might cut through it. I figured I would just put some kind of I-beam structure on the outside that looked like, you know, it helped kind of help these um, bases stay up and, you know, keep their shape when they were being transported. And then here's a great example of where greebling's great. You know, I'm just cutting out these little bits and topping off these cylinders. You know, I cut out all these little pipes and you don't want these pipes to be open. You know, it doesn't make sense. So, or if they are open like that example, it almost looks like some kind of, um, you know, like maybe they, they bring in air or they, you know, expel fuel or fumes or something from whatever's going on inside the base. But this is kind of a nice cap that looks like it sort of, you know, keeps out the weather or restricts how much comes in or goes out and just kind of tops off that that cylinder in a nice way, where if you just left it like the plain old cylinder, it just wouldn't look finished and wouldn't look detailed. 
Now the model is almost done. I'm checking the scale of the building with the figure. I'm also placing vehicles next to it and making sure they all feel cohesive. It's still hard to judge things fully, but then when we hit the entire building with some primer, you can really appreciate all that work we did. You should also note that I added a coffee ring to the top of the railing wall to give it thickness and smooth out that wonkiness in the curve that I was talking about earlier. And here's a little gas pump type thing I decided to throw together with some electrical wire and leftover bits I had from the build. Finally, we get to the stickers and paint. I just grabbed some Cobra symbols from the web and printed them out on some white sticker paper. The placement of those was similar to the Griebel work. Put them in logical places and not too evenly across the surface. For color, I just used a rattle can of white I had. I did do some texturing by spraying a dark gray at the building from three or four feet away. The idea is to let the paint sort of rain down on the model, and it gives a nice randomized speckled look. Just be patient and spray from far away and slowly build up. Here we have the completed Cobra Arctic base. It came out better than I expected and really helps tell a story when setting up my figures. Is this simply the entrance to a larger underground base? Is this one of many outposts Destro is setting up in the Arctic? The upper area really allows for some fun play, like defending a castle wall. Characters can scale up the sides to gain access through the hatch or be thrown down to the snow below. All the little greebles and pipes hint at some greater function and purpose, a telecommunications hub a temporary refueling outpost for scouting missions. Also important is the durability. Based on that strong container and using the hot glue ensures that this can take a beating. And the cap still works, so I can use it to carry my figures to and from different battlefields. Next, I'd love to make one for a desert scenario. Summer is coming, and I'm looking forward to taking the fight to the beach. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Comment below if you have any questions, and again, check out the Amazon affiliate links below if you're interested in the tools and materials I was using. Thanks again, and yo Joe!